Bhagavad Gita, text 4.2 O conqueror of the enemy, visionary kings thus obtained this knowledge through the Siblic succession. At present, under the influence of extended time here on earth, this teaching of yoga has been obscured. As Krishna prepares to explain the principle of the avatara, or divine descent, he introduces another important principle, that of Guru Parampara, or the Siblic succession. The two are intertwined. Krishna says that he inaugurates the divine lineage through which knowledge of himself is then revealed by his devotees appearing in that lineage. He also says that under the influence of time, this lineage can become broken, thus requiring that it be resurrected. Krishna himself becomes involved by revitalizing the lineage during his descent, as described in text 3. Later in the Gita, Krishna identifies time, described here as the influence under which the essential message of the lineage is obscured with himself. Thus, the hand of God is as much involved in obscuring the lineage as it is in establishing it. As circumstances and social considerations change over time, the need arises to re-explain the spirit of the lineage revealed to time and circumstances. That which is essential in the message must be separated from that which is relative. In delivering the principle, the details must be altered. This is the task of great souls. The mystery of Guru Parampara is that, while it suggests conformity to a lineage dating into antiquity, at the same time its spirit is that of non-conformity. Becoming a member, one conforms with the Absolute, the supreme non-conformist, who is absolutely independent. To be in the Guru Parampara, one must sometimes leave what appears to be the lineage one must distinguish between the form and substance of the tradition. Thus we find the most prominent members of the lineage are involved in renovation of the tradition, revealing its truth in a way relevant to time and circumstance, such that often those who are members in form only cannot appreciate them. To recognize reformers of the mission, practitioners themselves must also become essence seekers on a deeper level and thus remain vital in their practice. Failure to do so involves a break from the tradition despite superficial adherence to its external symbols. In pursuit of the spirit of the lineage, the practitioner must take note of this verse, both with regards to recognizing the work of great souls, when it outwardly appears to be different in detail from previous teachers, and with regards to their own practicing life. The spirit of the teaching is not as much obscured for the practitioner at a particular time as it is continuously. We glimpse the true meaning of the teaching only to lose sight of it again, being distracted by material conditioning under the influence of the mind and senses due to our external sensual orientation in life. We tend to gravitate towards the outer body of the message rather than to its heartbeat. The message is more than the cultural trappings 
in which it is presented. It answers to a sense of urgency in the soul striving for self-perfection. The spirit with which one initially embraces the lineage may over time become suppressed as the practitioner settles for pat answers to the problems of life rather than taking up the challenge of applying those answers in progressive spiritual life. Thus, there is an ongoing need to resurrect the spirit of the teaching, not only in terms of revitalizing its message generation after generation, but also in our everyday life of spiritual practice. When one representative passes the torch to another, this is the formal institution of Guru Parampara, from one to another. However, its essence is that in bearing the torch, the current link sheds new light. At the same time, renovators of the tradition must be distinguished from renegades of the tradition. The scriptural canon can help us to some extent in this task. Renovators justify their innovations with scriptural references, yet they also dynamically revise the scripture itself. Footnote 1. First, see Sri Jiva Goswami's argument in his Tattva Sandarbha for dismissing various texts in search of the flawless Brahmana, Srimad Bhagavatam. In the Gita itself, we find that Arjuna has quoted scripture while Krishna recites his citations, calling his attention to higher principles. The conclusion of scripture brings one to a point beyond what has been heard and what is to be heard. Renovators of the tradition cite those scriptures that they feel are essential, and in this way they support their innovations. However, not everyone will necessarily agree with their particular interpretations. Thus, more important than their ability to cite scripture, which even the devil can do, is their ability to make their vision credible by dint of their obvious spiritual power. The illustrious members of the Guru Parampara are kings of the world in the sense that they have conquered their own minds and senses, and these two, the mind and senses, rule everyday life on earth. In this verse, Krishna uses the word Rajarshi to describe the prominent members of the Guru Parampara, although he is literally referring to the kings mentioned in the previous verse, anyone representing the Guru Parampara is both a king and a seer, Rajarshi. Footnote 2 Vivasvan, the sun god, Manu, the father of humanity, and Ikshvaku, Manu's son, a powerful earthly king.